y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie, and I appreciate y'all stopping by. Today, I'll be showing y'all how I made these 14 quick and easy Valentine's Day themed minis for my tiered tray. I hope y'all enjoy the video, and if you do, please give it a thumbs up, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and jump into the first DIY. For this first project, I used this package of wooden Valentine's Day words that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I decided I wanted to use the words hugs, XOXO, and kiss. I used Craftsmore acrylic paint in the color French wine with a satin finish and painted the word kiss and the X's on the XOXO. Next, I used folk art paint in the color vintage white with a satin finish and painted the word hugs and the O's on the XOXO. I grabbed a piece of scrap wood from my dad's scrap pile, which happened to be a piece of old and weathered cedar with the bark still on the top and the bottom of the board. I cut three pieces that were just a little bit longer than each of the words. Since I really liked the look of the bark on the tops and bottoms of these blocks, I went outside and grabbed some strips of cedar bark from a tree and used hot glue to attach it to the ends of the wooden blocks so that the clean, fresh wood wouldn't be visible. Once the paint was dry and I had the bark on the blocks, I used hot glue to attach the words to the wooden blocks and this one is finished. If you wanted to recreate the look of these wooden blocks, you could cut three pieces from a one by four and then use a weathered gray stain or watered down gray paint to tint the front and back of the wood, then use hot glue to attach some cedar bark around the edges. I absolutely love the rustic look and feel of these word signs. Moving right along to DIY number two. For this next project, I used one of these wooden birdhouses with the heart from Dollar Tree. I started by using the folk art satin paint in the color vintage white to paint the front, back, and sides of the birdhouse. Next, I took Craftsmart satin paint in the color French wine and painted the edge of the roof, underneath the edge of the roof, the inside edge of the heart, the perch, and the base of the birdhouse. I used some more of the cedar bark to cover the roof. I placed some hot glue on one side of the roof and placed a piece of the bark on top, then used a pair of scissors to cut off the excess bark at the top ridge of the roof line. I continued to repeat these steps until I had the entire roof covered. Once the roof was completely covered, I flipped the birdhouse over and trimmed all the excess bark that was hanging over the edge for a nice clean finished look. Next, I used two of these mini birds that I picked up at Michael's. I removed the clip from the bottom of one of the birds and used hot glue to attach it to the perch. Then, to finish this project, I took the other little bird and removed the clip and hot glued it to the top of the birdhouse. I think this little birdhouse, along with its little love birds, turned out absolutely adorable. On to DIY number three. For this quick little project, I used one of these LED light-up trucks from Dollar Tree. I started by using apple barrel paint in the color chocolate bar to paint the body of the truck. Next, I used folk art satin paint in vintage white to paint the rail in the center of the tailgate along with both fenders. Then, I used Craftsmart satin paint in French wine to paint the hearts and the license plate. I used folk art brushed metal in the color brushed silver to paint the mirrors, bumper, and tail lights. Finally, I used folk art chalk paint in the color rich black to paint the tires. Now, I did try to use a paint marker and a tiny paintbrush to paint the words back onto the tailgate of the truck, but it turned into a giant mess that I really don't want to talk about. So, to fix that, I took and cut the same piece off of another truck and flipped it over so that it had no words and used hot glue to attach it to the tailgate of the truck to cover up the mess. I made sure to line up the hearts so that it was nice and even, and this one is finished. Let's go ahead and jump into DIY number four. For this project, I used this old cassette tape that my dad just happened to have laying around. I started by cleaning it up really well using some alcohol wipes. Next, I took Craftsmart satin paint in French wine and painted the middle of the cassette where there was a raised area as well as around the outside edge. Then I took folk art satin paint in vintage white and painted the other parts of the cassette tape. It did take at least three good coats to fully cover up all the wording. I used some satin Mod Podge to seal the paint so that it wouldn't easily be scratched off. 
Then to finish this cute little mixtape, I cut out the words Love Mix and Volume 1 in matte black vinyl using my Cricut machine and applied the words Love Mix in the center at the top of the cassette and then the words Volume 1 in the center at the bottom. Y'all, I really love this little mixtape. It brings back so many memories. On to DIY number 5. For this next super simple and easy project, I used one of the thick wooden hearts from Dollar Tree. I started by using folk art satin paint in vintage white to paint the entire heart and one of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. Once the paint was dry, I used hot glue to attach the tumbling tower block to the bottom of the heart so that it would stand on its own at a slight angle. Next, I used my Cricut to cut out mine and my husband's initials, a small arrow, and the year that we began dating in matte black vinyl. I cut all three pieces apart so that they would be easier to place exactly where I wanted them on the heart. I stood the heart up so that I could get the perfect placement for the year and applied it to the bottom of the heart followed by the arrow on top and then our initials on top of the arrow trying to keep them all somewhat centered and this one is finished. I am super happy with how this heart turned out. It's so simple but says so much. Moving right along to DIY number six. For this project, I used two of these square wood planks from Dollar Tree. I started by using folk art satin paint in the color vintage white to paint one of the wood planks and two of the little wooden cubes also from Dollar Tree. Next, I used a pair of lips from this ornament pack that I picked up at Dollar Tree and painted them using Craft Smart satin paint in the color French wine. Once all the paint was dry, I used hot glue to attach the lips to the center of the wood plank. Then I used my Cricut to cut out the lyrics, Your Kiss is on my list of the best things in life, in a matte black vinyl. I cut the lyrics apart and placed Your Kiss is on my list above the lips on the top half of the plank, and then placed Of the best things in life underneath the lips on the bottom half of the plank. Next, I took some of this Valentine's Day trim that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and used some hot glue to attach it to the back side of the plank on the left side of the lyrics and placed it along the side of the sign as sort of a border to fill in the empty space and used another dab of hot glue on the bottom back side of the plank to hold it in place and cut off the excess trim. I then repeated this on the other side of the lyrics. You'll notice here in a second that I did go ahead and remove the two wooden hearts from the trim so that I just had the red and white twine and three beads on each side. Then to finish off this sign, I used hot glue to attach the two wooden cubes to the back of the plank so that it would stand on its own. Here is how it looked once I removed the hearts and I think it looks so much better without them. For the second sign, I used Craft Smart Satin Paint in French wine to paint another one of the wooden planks and two more wooden cubes. I used my Cricut to cut out the lyrics, fooled around and fell in love, in a matte black vinyl. I wanted this one in a matte white vinyl, but it was late and I wasn't thinking, so I accidentally cut it out in black. Once all the paint was dry, I placed the lyrics in the middle of the wood plank. And then to finish off this sign, I used hot glue to attach the wood cubes to the back so that it would stand on its own. I think this one would have turned out a little bit better if I would used the white vinyl, but it doesn't look too bad like this. I want to take a second to talk about today's video. It's part of the monthly mini challenge hosted by Corey at Crafted by Corey. This month's theme is Valentine's Day, so if you want even more inspiration for your Valentine's Day tiered tray, be sure to check out the link to the playlist in my description box below. Also, if you haven't checked out Corey's channel, I would definitely recommend doing so. She is incredibly talented and has such cute DIYs. I'll also leave a link to her channel in the description box. Okay, on to DIY number 7. For this next project, I used one of these large standalone hearts from Dollar Tree. I started by removing all the paper from the front side of the heart. I peeled as much as I could off and then used a damp sponge and a mini scraper to remove the rest. Once I had the paper removed, I used Craft Smart Satin Paint in the color French Wine to paint the side and back of the heart. Next, I used this Music Note scrapbook paper from this Old World Winter Pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I used a regular glue stick to adhere the scrapbook paper to the front of the heart and set it aside and let the glue dry. 
Once the glue was dry, I took a sanding sponge and went around the outside edge of the heart to remove the excess scrapbook paper and to give it a nice clean edge. Using my Cricut, I cut out these lyrics from the song Brown Eyed Girl in a matte black vinyl and applied it to the front of the heart on top of the scrapbook paper. I chose this song because it is special to my husband and I, so I thought it would be a cute little addition to my tear tray that also had a special meaning to us. Next, I took two of the mini red roses from this pack that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and twisted the stems together so that they would sit exactly how I wanted them to. Then I took some twine and wrapped it around the stems once and tied it into a small bowl and used a pair of wire cutters to cut off the excess wire stem. To finish off this heart, I used some hot glue to attach the little bouquet to the upper right side of the heart to fill in the open space and trimmed up the tails of the bow. I absolutely love how this one turned out. Moving right along to DIY number eight. For this project, I cut two pieces from a three quarter inch square dowel that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. One of the pieces is roughly five inches long and the other roughly four. I used Craftsmart satin paint in French wine to paint the five inch piece. I used folk art satin paint in vintage white to paint the four inch piece. Next, I used two of these one inch ball knobs that are flat on one side from Hobby Lobby and painted them with apple barrel paint in the color Sun Kiss Peach. Once all the paint was completely dry, I used hot glue to attach one of the knobs to the top of each of the wooden dowels. Then I used hot glue to attach the bottom half of the dowels together so that they now look like a lovey-dovey couple. To add a little more decoration, I took some dark red twine and some regular brown twine and wrapped it around the couple three times using hot glue to secure it in place. Then to finish off this project, I took one of the unfinished wooden hearts from this ornament pack from Dollar Tree and used hot glue to attach it to the front of the couple right in the middle where the twine made an X. I think this one turned out really cute and was super quick and easy to make. Let's move on to DIY number nine. For this project, I used one of these 2.375 inch terracotta pots that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I used Krylon chalky finished paint in the color classic white to paint the outside of the pot and then placed a small piece of floral foam inside. Next, I took a roll of burlap that I'd picked up at Hobby Lobby on sale after Christmas and measured out how long of a piece I needed to cover the pot and cut it to size. I then took that piece and used it to measure out and cut another piece of burlap the same size. Once I had the pieces cut, I placed the pot down in the middle of one of the burlap pieces and wrapped it around the sides of the pot, making sure to fold in the corners and used a piece of twine to help hold it in place temporarily and pulled the burlap snug around the sides. I then took and placed the pot in the center of the other piece of burlap facing the opposite direction and again wrapped it around the sides of the pot folding in the corners and using a piece of twine to hold it in place. I did end up going back and adding small dabs of hot glue on the folded corners to hold them in place so that they would look nice and neat. After I had the pot completely wrapped, I took some scissors and trimmed up the burlap around the top. I wanted it to keep the wrapped bouquet look but not be as long. I also went ahead and pulled some of the strings to give the burlap a more worn and rustic look. Next, I took some of the dark red twine and regular brown twine and wrapped it around the top of the pot right under the lip twice and tied it in a double knot to secure it in place. I then went ahead and cut off the piece of twine that I had holding the burlap temporarily. I used these dark red paper roses that I picked up at Hobby Lobby to create the arrangement. Not all of the roses had floral wire attached to them, so I took some skewers from Dollar Tree and cut them down and hot glued them to the back of the roses and arranged them in the pot. Once I had the roses arranged how I liked them, I took two different greenery picks and a baby breath pick from Dollar Tree and cut off a few pieces and placed them into the rose arrangement. I started with the baby breath and arranged a few pieces in areas that looked a bit bare or had a gap between the roses. Next, I took the greenery pieces and filled in any of the leftover open spaces and around the bottom of the arrangement. Here is how the arrangement looked once I was happy with the placement of the roses and the greenery. 
I took one of these wooden tags from Hobby Lobby that says with love and tied it onto the twine that is wrapped around the top of the pot, then cut off the excess twine. Then to finish this one up, I took the red and brown twine and made a small shoestring bow and hot glued it onto the front of the arrangement and trimmed up the tails. I think this little arrangement turned out so sweet and adds the perfect amount of florals to my tiered tray. Next up, DIY number 10. For this project, I used two of these wooden heart sticks from Dollar Tree. I used Craft Smart satin paint and French wine to paint both hearts. Once the hearts were dry, I carefully twisted and wiggled them until they came off of the wooden sticks. The hearts are just glued onto the sticks and will come off clean with a little bit of patience. I took one of these sticks from a large matchstick and cut two small pieces roughly the same size. After I had the matchstick pieces cut, I used some hot glue to attach one of the hearts onto each of the matchsticks. Next, I took one of the small bottles of seashells from Dollar Tree and removed the sticker, the raffia from around the neck, and the seashells from inside the bottle. Once I had the bottle cleaned out, I used some hot glue to glue the ends of the heart matches together so that they would stay together inside the bottle. Then I put some hot glue on the bottom of the matchsticks and used a pair of tweezers to place the matches in the middle of the bottle and held them in place until the glue set up and replaced the cork. This is how the bottle looked once I had the matches inside. Next, I took some of the dark red and brown twine and wrapped it once around the neck of the bottle and tied it in a double knot to secure it in place. This time, I left a long piece of the twines hanging so I could attach the tag. I used one of the natural wood hearts from this ornament pack from Dollar Tree as the tag. I used my Cricut to cut out the words perfect match in a matte black vinyl. I found it easier to cut the words apart and then apply them to the heart one at a time. Then to finish up this quick little project, I used hot glue to attach the wood heart to the pieces of twine that I left hanging and cut off any of the excess twine that was longer than the heart. I think this one turned out just too cute. Jumping right on in to DIY number 11. For this next quick and easy project, I used one of these wooden love words that I picked up at Walmart. I started by using folk art satin paint in vintage white to paint the front and back of the letters L, V, and E, and then the inside and outside edges of the heart. Next, I used Craft Smart satin paint in French wine to paint the front and back of the heart and around the outside edges of the letters. I told y'all this one was quick and easy, so to finish it off, I took three of the mini red roses from this pack from Hobby Lobby and cut off the wire stems. I used hot glue to attach one of the roses to the lower right corner of the heart and then used more hot glue to attach the other two roses to the upper left arch of the heart and this one is done. I love how this one turned out. It was quick, simple, and looks so pretty. On to DIY number 12. For this next super quick and easy project, I used one of these glass bottles from Michaels and some gel food coloring in the color super red that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I added a couple drops of the food coloring to some water in a bottle and shook it up really well. Then I poured some of the red water into the glass bottle until I was happy with the amount of water in the glass. After I had the water in the glass, I replaced the cork and made sure it was nice and snug. Next, I took one of these wooden with love tags from Hobby Lobby and flipped it over so that I could use the blank back side. I used my Cricut to cut out the phrase number nine in matte black vinyl and applied it to the back of the tag on the right side. Since I somehow managed to lose the dot after the letter O, I took a black paint marker and drew one onto the tag. Then to finish this one up, I took some twine and placed the folded section through the hole on the tag and fed the two tails through the loop to secure the tag on the twine and then tied it around the neck of the bottle securing it with a double knot and that's it for this one. This is probably one of my favorite minis for this tiered tray. I love the subtle nod to a great song. Let's jump on into DIY number 13. For this next project, I used five of the golden wooden heart sticks from this package from Dollar Tree. I decided to keep the hearts gold and not paint them, so I carefully twisted and wiggled them until they came off the sticks. I went outside and found five twigs that the hearts would fit on nice and snug and cut them all to roughly the same length at about five inches long. 
I didn't worry if they were a little bit crooked because it adds character. I used a small dab of hot glue in the hole at the top of one of the hearts and placed one end of one of the twigs inside and repeated this step to add a heart on each of the other four twigs. I found these fancy feathers that I had in my stash that I picked up a while back at Hobby Lobby and thought they would be perfect to finish the arrows. I separated out the feathers by color and used three of the same color feathers for each arrow. With the front of the feather facing outward, I cut down the bottom part of the feather at an angle close to the center ridge so that it would lay flat against the twig. I only took off a small amount of feather at a time so I wouldn't cut too much and then cut off the base of the feather so that it was just the feather part. This is how it should look once it's been trimmed up in the base cut. I used a small amount of hot glue to attach the feather to the end of the twig opposite the heart. I then repeated this step using another feather, but this time I cut it along the opposite side of the center ridge so that it would set flat opposite the first feather. I used hot glue to attach this feather to the twig straight across from the first feather. For the third feather, I picked a shorter feather and repeated the steps to cut it to fit between the two longer feathers. I used more hot glue to attach it to the twig right between the two other feathers. This is how it should look once all three feathers are glued to the twig and fluffed up a bit. To give the arrow a nice finished look, I took some twine and added a tiny dab of hot glue on the back side of the twig right behind the feathers and wrapped the twine around the twig enough times to cover up the glue and the base of the feathers, then secured it with more hot glue. I also wrapped the twine a couple times down around the top of the heart and secured it with hot glue so that both ends would match. I then repeated these steps to add the feathers and twine to the other four arrows and this is how they turned out. I really couldn't be any happier with these arrows. Next I used one of these heart shaped glasses from Michaels to hold the arrows but I wanted to dress it up a little bit so I used my Cricut and cut out the words Cupid's handcrafted arrows made with love in some matte black vinyl and applied it to the front of the glass and removed the cork. Then to finish this one, I arranged the arrows in the glass heart and that's it. This one is hands down my favorite project from today's video. I absolutely love the rustic handmade vibe of these arrows. And last but not least, DIY number 14. For this final super quick and easy project, I used three of these plastic candy wrapper favors that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I painted one with the folk art satin paint in the color vintage white. I painted another one with the Craftsmart satin paint in the color French wine, and I painted the last one with folk art enamel glass paint in the color gold ore, and that's it for this one. It did take a couple coats to cover the plastic using the white and wine colors, but the gold color took about three good coats letting it dry well between coats. Here is the final reveal of all of today's Valentine's Day theme minis displayed on my tiered tray. I absolutely love how all these minis came together to create a rustic and fun Valentine's Day display. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Mine has to be the Cupid's Arrows, but man, that mixtape and love potion are pretty awesome too. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. Please don't forget to go check out the link to the playlist in the description box below for even more Valentine's Day tier tray decor inspiration, as well as go check out Corey's channel. Y'all won't be disappointed in either. I'll see y'all next time.